Can an illegal immigrant buy a house is the topic we will learn about the rules for foreigners buying property in USA and is buying a property in USA give you residency. And to teach us about the ins and outs, I have a special guest with me today, David Traster, who's an attorney and he loves immigration. He actually helped many immigrants here in New York and New Jersey. Hello, David. Hi, Esfir. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. Okay. So you've helped a lot of immigrants, but we want to talk about real estate. Can an illegal immigrant buy property at all? So the answer is yes. Whether someone is illegal or what we legally like to call as undocumented. So better term than Ill illegal, undocumented. But I understand the question. Yes, somebody who doesn't have residency or permission to be in the United States can still buy property. They might have a hard time qualifying for a mortgage, but there's nothing that prevents them from buying property. Same thing with foreigners. Foreigners buy property all the time in the United States. They might have different mortgage rates. It might be harder to qualify for a mortgage. There, not every bank provides loans for foreigners, but there are enough and there's enough programs out there and mortgage brokers know them that people can buy property. And it's not an issue. The issue becomes when it's time to sell, not buy. What's the issue when it's time to sell? The issue when it's time to sell is that you need a social security number or an ITIN number, one or the other, because IRS is going to make sure they get some of the money from your sale, whether you like it or not. So whether if somebody is illegal, undocumented in the country, most of the time they might not have social security or an I-10 number. And that will be a problem when they have to sell. They'll have to go and apply for one, which could delay things a lot. IRS isn't really quick to respond or do things very quickly. The other part is the withholding on the transfer tax. If somebody, those people who have sold property may remember one of the forms they signed is a FERPTA form. It's a declaration that you are non-foreigner. If you don't sign this form, then there is a withholding from you based on the country that you're from. I recently had this very issue in a closing where the individual was not a resident of the United States. It was a foreign investor who had property here. In reality, they bought property for their child to live at while the child attended school in the United States so that they wouldn't have to pay rent and they could have their own apartment. Then the child graduated and left and they rented it for a year or two. And then they decided, well, I don't want to be a landlord from overseas. I want to sell it. Everything is fine. The realtor signed the contract. They found the buyer. We're approaching closing. All of this stuff comes out that this person doesn't have social security and doesn't have a green card, doesn't have a citizenship in this country. They're actually a citizen of Dubai. And so then there is a withholding and they had to be withheld 15% of the purchase price due to the fact that they were not legal or resident of United States. Interesting. Everything was fine when they purchased the property. They, I'm assuming they purchased it in cash. So there was mm -hmm. no problem. They didn't have to go through any mortgage proceedings, but what would be the process? Let's say no mortgage because with the mortgage, I foresee it's going to be a challenge, but would a title company have a problem insuring the property? or it's relevant to them as long as the property fits the underwriting criteria? So for title, it doesn't matter when you're buying. When you're selling it, whether the settlement agent is title, as it is in New Jersey, or someone else, as it is in New York, title is generally not a settlement agent in New York. The settlement agent is responsible for collecting all the money that needs to be paid to the appropriate parties. If 
the person cannot provide their social security and cannot sign this form that certifies that they're a lawful permanent resident, meaning green card holder or a citizen of the United States, then the settlement agent has to make sure that certain money is withheld for the IRS and that money gets subtracted from at closing from the seller's proceeds. And there's nothing close. that, I'm sorry? Yes, it closes, close. but look, if you buy a property for $500,000, let's say, in five years, you're selling it for, let's say, 600000 And now you have to pay 15% of that as a withholding. Besides, the, you still have to pay the transfer tax to the state. So, so that's an addition to the transfer tax. This is an additional one, right. Oh. So when you're talking about, and then if you're not a resident of that state, there's an additional transfer tax. So these people wound up paying something like 18%. When you're talking about $600,000 and you're paying 18%, there's your whole appreciation between the time that you bought it and what it's valued at now. And you have to just basically give that away to the IRS. Okay, they will charge it from the total or just for the difference? From the sale price. Yes, it's not like capital gains is what you're talking about, like the difference between what you bought it and what you sold it. That's capital gains. This is just on the purchase price. It gets withheld. It's not a very lenient law or a rule, and it really pisses off sellers, right, who weren't told about this at the time they were buying. I've dealt with this issue several times, and it was always like, why wasn't this told to me when I was buying? I don't know. I tell my clients, I don't know who your lawyer was that didn't tell you, but it had nothing to do with the purchase. It had has to do with the sale. That's a really great point to know about. And it's, it's important is buying a property in the United States as an illegal immigrant, would that give you the opportunity or strengthen your opportunity to get residency? No, it has nothing to do with residency. None. So no incentive it's very, whatsoever. It's very hard to become legal in the United States, contrary to what we hear on TV. A lot of the things we hear deal with just the politics aspect of immigration. and But in reality, it's very hard to get residency in the United States. You really have to have very close relatives, such as meaning parents, brother, sister, children or a spouse that's really it uncle grandparents you cannot get residency through those and even brother and sister it takes 15 years because it's a, like a most distant relative spouse parents children under 21 that's the quickest category that's usually about a year but everything else varies on the degree of relationship and so forth but or the other option to get residency in the United States is through work. There's work visas that could lead to green cards and citizenship. And there's also asylum. But asylum is a very long and complicated process. There is no clear standard. A lot depends on which judge you get. Do you get a liberal judge? Do you get a conservative judge? What is your personal story dealing with asylum? So. It's not easy to become legal in the United States. So are there any countries that is easier from there migrating to United States? Is it easier from specific countries to come here or more difficult or it doesn't really matter the process? The process is the process. Unfortunately, our immigration law is very outdated. The last time it was changed was in like 1986 or something like that, or 88, I forget, it was under Reagan. And that, those laws are still on the books. So those quotas, those numerical quotas of how, how many immigrants are allowed in each category, they're still from 1980s. We're 40 years removed from that. But immigration is a very hot, charged political topic. It's, it gets, there's, and that's why nothing gets changed in immigration. It's, people love to talk about it. They love to mention things they might love to make sound clips for tvs and news anchors and but in reality nothing changes with immigration there's so, very small changes here and there like for now there's a thing to help ukrainians who were displaced from the war 
those kind of things. There was a thing for Haiti when the earthquake happened in 2010. But these are very minor kind of country specific, instance specific. As a grand scheme, immigration law is very outdated and hasn't been changed in a very long time. But with these Ukraine and Haiti unfortunate situations, is it a temporary immigration or is it something that once they get into approval status and stuff, it's a permanent thing? It's not permanent. It's actually called temporary protective status, TPS. That's the abbreviation, but that's what it stands for, temporary protected status. The U.S. gives you this temporary status where you could be legally in this country. You are given permission to work, but it's not a green card. It doesn't lead to a green card and it doesn't lead to citizenship. But okay. it could be renewed and renewed and renewed. Like the Haiti earthquake was in 2010. And for people who were displaced and got this TPS status in 2011, 2012, immigration has been given the authority, given people the authority to renew it every 18 months. So those people are still doing it. Now, so if they want to change their status, they have to do it through the traditional ways of what I talked about, whether it's marriage, parents, siblings, one of those. Okay. Would in that, and I'm going to ask this now, in the temporary protection status, if they go, they get a job and they pay taxes and they buy a home, is that going to have a different result or there's nothing changes as far? Yes. No, that, because they have a job they, and they're given this status. They're given a social security number. They pay their taxes like everybody else. So yes, they are treated different. Okay, in this situation, if they do happen to buy a house, and will that help them to get the permanent status versus the temporary protection status? Or No. Property has nothing to, to do with status at all. It doesn't matter. You could buy millions and millions of dollars with the property. It doesn't do anything for you. But it will have a difference if they sell Correct. within that status that they have. And what are the is that going to be the same uh, transfer taxes and it would be just like anybody else selling a property. You pay your transfer tax to the city, the state, and that's basically it. You don't have the IRS withholding except the capital gains tax, which is the difference of what you bought it at and what it is. But for a couple, if a couple buys it together, I think. The capital gains status is $550,000. So it would have to be a very. They raised I think it to 500. So. It was always 500. Did they raise it to 550? Then you might be, you, you might be right. <laughs> I was uh, like, I, I didn't I know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as I was saying that, I was saying, I was thinking, is it 500? Think 500. Or is it 550. 250 uh, per it might, you might be right. 250,000 per single person, 500,000 per couple. You're correct. It's 250 right. for one or 500 for a couple. Which I think is so old and outdated too. I, I had a conversation about that in one of the videos that I did and I'm like, real estate went up so much since they made that number up. Isn't it time to raise it? It doesn't even make sense. But anyway, that, that was great. So the conclusion is sorry to say sounds like there's absolutely no incentive for a foreigner to buy property here they can't use it for residency or help you get residency you can't use it for all these things but the good point part that i found is that on a temporary protection status if you are paying your taxes and buying property and it goes up in value, you could sell it and you can you will be obligated to whatever a United States citizen is obligated to. Yep. So yep. that was great information. I encourage everyone to check out more of our videos that I did with David. We have a lot of great information there for you. It's very educational. And the best part is you got it for free. So tune in like the channel subscribe click on the notification bell share with friends that you feel is going to be helpful to them 
send us your questions to keeping it real with the sphere it's right here on your screen and it's going to be in the description ask us questions via the comments we want questions via the comments because we want a lot of people to benefit from the answers and we will see you on the next video thanks for watching